You know, thinking back to when I was younger, when I was 13, 14, picking up the guitar and I just fell in love with music and the fact that I was able to figure out chordings and sounds on this guitar and eventually make a song and do solos and then eventually combine that with singing. It was like uh, this creative process that I just, I loved so much. And I didn't consider at the time learning the business because I was a kid. I was in high school and, uh, you know, there were no music business courses. There was high school band and that was that. And this was in 1994. So uh, quite a while ago. And I'm hoping that things have changed now. I'm hoping that there's schools, high schools even, that have music business courses. There probably aren't. Um, but luckily, there are places online now that anybody, including high school students, can go and learn about the business. And for me, when I was trying to, when I was growing up, deciding, yeah, yeah, I want to do music. And I thought I had to be a rock star. I had to be touring the world. I had to be making money and signed to a label by touring. And that was it. I was wrong. And even with that in mind, I never thought about the fact that I should learn the business. Today, I want to talk to you about why it's so important to put the business first, to learn the business of music licensing or any business you're in. We're going to talk about that and a lot of other things. Thanks again for being here. I want to talk about the importance of understanding the business that you're going into. And it's easy to overlook that when talking about music and music licensing because uh, music's an art form and there are artists and that's a big part of the business. It's a lifeblood of the business. Our artists, they drive the business. But that's not everything. There's a lot of other components to make a business work. It's kind of like um, imagine Apple existing with uh, only computer engineers running the place. It wouldn't do what it does. In fact, that was one of the earliest mistakes that Apple made was uh, advertising about all the components of the computer and the technical bits and parts. And it was so mind baffling to its consumers back in the early 80s that nobody would buy Apple because they didn't relate to it. They didn't understand what RAM was and what processor speed was and all this technical jargon and it intimidated their customers. So Steve Jobs came in and he said, you know what, we need to speak to our customers. And what he did was create a, a product that was something that you could use, that you could have photos uh, with, that you could tell your story with, that you could make movies with, that you could uh, listen to music on. And he, he solved a problem by offering a system that people could relate to. And without his genius in doing that, and that's the business part of it. He he thought about how can I market to my customers? It's still just a computer, but speaking about the computer in a way that people could relate to. And uh, you know, if it was the engineers running the place, they they they're not marketers, they're not business people. They don't think about that. They know how to build, they know that technical jargon, and that's that. And Steve Jobs was one of a kind. He's he does it all, you know. He was an engineer, but he also became a business person. And, and led that company to success for a long, long time. Um, with music, if the music business was run by artists, nothing would get done. Artists create art, and that's, that's what artists do, and that's it. And uh, I, I want to add that there is an art to the business side of things. You know, art is a word that's so subjective. And, uh, you know, when you create something, if you think about Dada art, if anyone's ever heard of Dada art, which I always thought was the most ridiculous form of art ever, it's like when someone puts a dot on a paper and they call it art. And it's Dada art. Okay, well, someone called it art, so now it's art. It's so subjective. But when it comes to monetizing art and making art make money, and in this case, making music make money, you have to take the time to understand the business first. When you're young, and I'm going to always use soccer as a reference because that's what I did growing up was play soccer. I know a lot of people did around the world, uh, football, soccer. And uh, when you learn soccer, you learn first the rules of the game. You know, there's offense, there's defense. You attack on the opponent's goal. You defend your goal. And then you learn skills. You learn how to dribble. You learn how to pass. You learn how to shoot. And then you step onto the field and you start learning, you start training, you start practicing and practicing. And let's say you want to be a lawyer. You have to study law for years before you actually start practicing. Or uh, an engineer or an architect, you have to study the craft and learn about it before you enter in and start doing it. It's no different with music. 
If you create art and you think you're going to hop in the business and just succeed with that art because the art's just so good, uh, you're missing a crucial step. And that is taking the time to understand the business. It's what I had to do when I was starting out. And finally, after I learned the business, after I really studied it and understood it, I was able to create art that fit into the business and I was able to market it properly to the people who could um, make things happen with it and actually monetize it, which allowed me to make money from my music. And it's what will allow you to do the same. It's why I created my masterclass. It's why my masterclass is about the business of music licensing, because I learned the business first. I was an artist. I was a, a singer songwriter. I was gigging. Uh, I was in and out of bands. I worked a job that I liked, but I didn't love it. I wasn't happy. I wasn't making music. If I still worked there today, I can't imagine what I would be like. I'd probably be a bitter, bitter man. Um, you know, it, it, uh, by learning the business, which I would do actually on my breaks at work, I would start learning about the publishing business and licensing and publishing and the record label. I read the book, All You Need to Know About the Music Business by Don pa Passman. It's kind of the the Holy Bible of the Music Business. I highly recommend that book, All You Need to Know About the Music Business by Donald Passman. Uh, I also read a book called Music Publishing, A Songwriter's Guide by Randy Poe, P-O-E, like Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, it was a fantastic book and it was great because it put it in the perspective of a songwriter. And that's what I was uh, from very young. I started writing songs at 14. So I highly recommend that book, both of those books. And there's another book I, I swear by, which is uh, Making Music Make Money by Eric Beal. And it's possible I might write a book one day. I've been thinking about that. So that might be a five-year plan for me. But, uh, you know, there's so much to learn about the music business and the record business alone. And that's not it, guys. That's not the only business you're entering into with music licensing. You've got the music business, which is, you know, record labels, publishers, performance rights organizations, music libraries, the Library of Congress, uh, unions, you know, like SAG and APTRA, the unions that musicians and actors belong to, uh, performing artists. Um, I think APTRA is the American Federation of Television Recording Artists or Television Performers and Recording Artists, something like that. Artists alone, songwriters, composers, producers. There's so many components to the music business business not just in the US, but worldwide that you, you should understand and you need to take the time to learn about. But beyond that, it's the entertainment business, right? Because the music we create, when we wanna license our music, we're putting our music, as we're offering it as a, as a service to people who create movies and create TV shows and people who create commercials for brands. So there's the advertising business too. Um, there's the trailer business, which is marketing. Uh, and kind of like very similar to the advertising business and concept in, in that it's a brand that needs to market the brand. In those cases, it's the production company that produced the film that then needs to market that film. And by market, it means get the word out about the film and get people to fill seats in theaters or to download it or subscribe to Netflix to watch it. Uh, whatever the model might be, it's changing every, all, all the time. But you still need to take the time not just to learn the business of music, but to learn the entertainment business, to learn the film business, the TV business, the commercial business, uh, producing, maybe music supervision. Maybe you should dive into learning more about what it takes to be a music supervisor. If you understand that, then you'll know who you're pitching to. It's part of what I teach in my masterclass. I'm going to be doing more courses about that uh, down the line to do deep dives into those things. And of course, there's little sub components of each of these businesses that you could really get uh, granular with. And it's hard to learn, you know, the deep dive stuff to, unless you have all the hours in your, in your schedule to do that. And most people don't. Time is an issue. And I totally understand that. And I totally can relate to that. Uh, what you need to do, what I, or what I recommend doing is batching your schedule, blocking out time. So, block out time to make yourself unavailable. I block out Mondays now just for me to create content for this program. So it's Monday right now. I'm recording this episode and I'll probably do another episode after this. And next Monday I'll do the same. I'll do two more episodes, but I batch out that time in my schedule. I am unavailable for calls. I'm unavailable for meetings. And I do that 
in, in specifically with intention to use this time to create content, which is a very important part to drive my business. What will drive your business? What will further you along? If it's learning about the music business, then batch time in your schedule on Mondays or Tuesdays or Wednesdays between 1 and 3 p.m. or whenever it is that could work for you. Batch that time out to study it. Choose a topic to study every week. This week, I'm going to learn about mechanical licenses. Next week, I'm going to learn about performance income and so on and so forth. There's ways to batch it. You don't need to take it all at once. You know, I've, I've climbed the mountain and now I'm coming back down to teach you what I've learned because it worked. And for you to climb that mountain, it's not going to be a sudden shoot to the top. It doesn't work like that. Uh, I've been doing this for 16 years and it takes time and I'm still learning. I'm still climbing uh, every day. So, you know, it's an ongoing climb. And you need to remember to enjoy the hike, enjoy the ride. That's that's what it's about is enjoying it and taking uh, taking it all in and stepping back as you reach certain summits and enjoying the view, you know, like you're climbing a Mount Everest and you reach the lookout point. You just take a breath and you take it all in. Uh, it's important to do that, too, in your journey in the music business, in music licensing. It's such a fun space. And uh I'm so excited about what we're all doing together here and the people that are in my masterclass and in my all access program and just joined my world tour program, which I just launched. And that's available as an evergreen uh, product where we learn about the international marketplace for mu licensing your music uh, and what the PROs do and how they operate independently of one another in each country. It's different. The rules and regulations are different and it's just really, really cool and really exciting. And, uh, you know, if you're doing this, it's because if you're really committed to doing it and you're listening here, it means you are. If you're still listening to this, this episode, uh, it's because you're excited about it. You're feeling energized about it and thinking, yeah, this is this is cool. I want to do this. And I love that enthusiasm. I feed off of that. And that's what keeps me going and keeps me uh, in a place where I can offer to you what I'm offering. And uh, the course and courses I'm offering are going to cover all this. It's going to take time because there's a lot to teach, but I am going to teach it. And uh, I think you're going to really love it. And, you know, in the meantime, it does not hurt to go to Borders. Oh, gosh, Borders Bookstore. Listen to me. I don't even know if that's still around. Go to Amazon Books or Amazon Kindle. Uh, download some, you know, audio books or uh, just download some of the books I mentioned earlier. Uh, read them study them, read them again. If you don't understand something, circle it, highlight it, make notes. Think about it like school. You are going through school and you have to study. You have to quiz yourself because there's nobody else to give you tests. You have to be your teacher while you're also the student. You're your own teacher. So um, it's a challenge to do that, to have that discipline, but you have to choose to do it. Uh, complacency is, it's not going to get you anywhere. And uh, you do need to take action on furthering your career and there's no shortcuts. You can't just, you know, jump to pitching your music when it's not ready. And if you're pitching a lot, if you're listening to this and you're pitching and pitching and pitching and you've been doing it for a good six months to 12 months and you're not getting any bites, you need to take a serious look at your product and get some feedback on it. Maybe um, change the way you're accepting that feedback. Some people are really closed off to feedback. I do consults all the time. And there are uh, people that I do consults for that will literally just say, no, no, no. I know when the person, the right person hears it, they're gonna get it. And to that person, I say, okay, well, good luck with that. You know, um, I can tell you my feedback and you can do with it what you will. Uh, and I, when I give feedback, the intention is always to help you grow uh, and when anybody's giving you feedback, you know, they're not looking, no, nobody ever listens to a song. And if they're giving you feedback, like you might want to consider this and that, or, you, you know, I don't like this part. Some people aren't, don't have the best tact with giving feedback. But regardless, even if they say, I don't like this part. Sure, that's an opinion. Sometimes that can be uh, hard to be objective about. And you want to get multiple opinions on something. But a comment like, I don't like something versus you, have you considered doing, you know, changing the drums here or changing the guitar lick or hiring a vocalist instead of singing on it. Those are specific comments that that person's listening closely to it and they're giving you feedback thinking, I want to help you. 
It's coming from a place of wanting to help you. So it's hard. It's hard not to take that feedback personal, but you really need to uh, try not to take it personal. And I'm guilty of it when I was getting feedback coming up and you might have heard me talk about it in another episode. Uh, when I was starting out getting feedback, I was like, no, 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 it's my art. It's good as is. When the right person hears it, they'll get it. I totally did that. I absolutely did that. And I understand where that comes from, but it wasn't right. I can tell you now that it was not the right place to be coming at things from. The minute I pulled myself out of the equation, I removed my ego and I started producing content that worked and served the industry and what the business needed I started getting a lot of licenses and good licenses at that. So it will make all the difference uh, in what you do. Thanks so much for listening. You guys stay cool. Peace. If you're interested in getting your songs into your favorite TV shows, films, commercials, trailers, and video games, you're going to want to check out the free guide below.